SUNY Buffalo, right in the middle of New York, one of the most popular universities in the New York area, without a doubt. And, you know, a lot of you guys are applying to this university, right? You may think it's a great place to be, but, you know, I'm kind of shocked by what's going on at this university right now. Let me actually share with you the news of, you know, while this university has great opportunities around it, great employers and, you know, a lot going on in its favor, let me actually sh share you the news about this university terminating 30 F1 visas and actually more than 30 F1 visas, all of which were Chinese students. And these students were actually on campus already. They were in the United States already. However, they did not fulfill one small requirement, which the university may not even have mandated on them actually based on the F1 visa rules. However, the university terminated their visas because these students did not respond. You be the judge. Is this a good move or not? Now, this is all about Chinese students. And I know a lot of you guys may be Indians watching this, but this is actually happening with a couple of Indian students as well. So pay attention. Don't make this mistake once you get to the university of your choice. It is extremely important. Now, let me actually tell you what happens over here. Once you cross the borders and you move from your country to the United States on an F1 visa, right? And hopefully you're going to be flying over there or you're going to be going via the sea. Mostly by, uh, by flying only, right? Most of you guys, I think 99.99% of you guys will be flying. Now, in that case, what happens is that you will receive a stamp on your visa that yes, you are in the United States and this is your duration of stay, etc, etc. Everything will be present on that stamp. However, for people who are crossing the border to go to the United States, they directly receive an I-94 form. Right now, this I-94 form is just, you know, proof that you have legally entered the United States. And this is proof that, yes, you are a legal non-immigrant in the United States. Okay, especially for the F1 visa students, this is what I'm talking about right now. Now, what happens is when you move from your country to, uh, to the US and you move over there via flight or sea, you will just receive that stamp. You won't receive that I-94 form that is, right? You won't receive that. What happens over here is that the Customs and Border Protection, that is CBP, basically uploads your I-94 on the website and you can easily get it from there since you entered via air, air or sea route, you can actually go ahead to the website and you can download this I-94. It's available as soon as you enter the United States and that stamp is, you know, on your passport, basically, right? Now, what happened is this I-94 form is an important form. This is required by the university that, okay, you legally entered the United States. Now, these Chinese students, they're going ahead at the university and they're studying, right? They have started taking the classes, they have paid their fee, they've paid their dues and they're taking classes. Everything is legal. Now, what the university does is they email them. Look, we need your I-94. We need your I-94. Now, what happens in China is that they won't be very used to checking the email, right? Or especially when you receive a new email ID from the university, right? That, okay, blah, 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 at the rate, sunibuffalo.com, whatever it is, right? You may not be checking it very, very regularly, right? May not, you may not be actually checking it at all. You may not have even logged in once over there. Now what happens is, okay, the university is asking you for the I-94, they're asking you, asking you, asking you. It's been 30 days. You could not respond because you actually did not receive the email. And one day you wake up and you get a phone call that, that look, your F1 visa is now terminated and you have to go back to your home country. Does it make a lot of sense? Is it okay doing something like that with the international students? I would say no. I stand by Chinese students in this. And let me actually explain it to you why the university is wrong. It's not, the, it's not that these students weren't checking their email. It's their fault, right? I mean, you can think that. However, think about this. First off, my defense, and this is also what a lot of advocates are saying, is that the Department of Homeland Security actually increased this 30-day limit to a 60-day limit, that you can actually give students 60 days to get their I-94, right? However, SUNY Buffalo, they took matters into their own hands, and you know, as per law, even though they had 60 days, they suddenly started terminating the F1 visas. Doesn't make sense, right? Second thing, not even, not even, you know, uh, something related to this is basically it's not about the government. It's not about, you know, the students not being respond, uh, responsive. What it's about is the fact that SUNY Buffalo already had these students' details. They already had the details of the passport, the passport numbers of these applicants, you know, and of course, a lot more details that they take from you in the application portal when you apply to the SUNY Buffalo, right? What they could have done at this point of time is take those details and get the I-94 directly. Their DSO would know this process actually. This is a very common process and the universities don't need the I-94 from these students. In fact, I never had to give it when I was at USC. However, Sony Buffalo said, no, the students have to provide it. Why should we take it? Why should we put in the effort to get it? Instead, what we'll do is we'll terminate everyone's visas, you know, all of these students who did not deliver it. That's kind of disheartening to me. These students are basically 
staying in the US, they were attending classes, they, were, they didn't receive a phone call, not even a single phone call, no external contact, no one in the class told them that, look, you have to submit it or, you know, this is going to happen, something like that's going to happen. No, they straight away go ahead and they terminate the visas. Does that make sense? No, right? There's more. All of these students now have to go back to their home country. They have to book extremely expensive flight tickets, right? You know how the thing works, right? At this point of the year, at least. They have to go back they have to reapply for the visa and in, in the meanwhile they'll be taking online classes and now when they go ahead in, in front of the visa officer it's gonna be very hard getting that approval first off for the F1 visa again and you know let's say somehow they manage to get the approval then they have to take another expensive flight go back to the US where they already have their leases pending they already have to pay the rent for the next 12 months right they already have you know things like food plans going on they already have their life over there that they have to leave now all of a sudden without any plan and they have to go back home and you know not only is this a problem for the students in terms of their studies but you know mentally physically and even you know their studies will be affected in some way right going ahead and studying online that's not what they planned that's not what they were paying for this is absolutely ridiculous it doesn't make sense and when UB has access to everything you know the University of Buffalo has access to all of these details they could have easily resolved the issue or maybe just given them a phone call beforehand that look, we need these details from you only and you have to provide them. I'm sure that all of these students would have provided them. And a couple of Indian students are also saying that, you know, this is happening with them as well. But at the same point of time, we don't have the exact numbers or anything, but we know that this is happening a lot with the Chinese students. Now, I'm not saying, I know China is not my favorite country and, you know, I'm not saying that Chinese people are my favorite, right? But what I'm saying is that if you think about it from you know, being in their footsteps and, you know, you think about it as an international student, things could have genuinely gone wrong. They may not have received the emails. They may have just gone to their spam. They may not have checked their emails for some reason, right? They may have some emergency or maybe they were just not able to open the email for some reason, some technical issues, maybe, right? Maybe just the email client was not opening on their laptop because of something that the university did. Something could have happened, right? It's not a single student. It's not five, 10 students. It's over 30 students. So yeah, it's not a great news that I'm very happy about, but it's something that you need to know. If you are going to your university, actively monitor your emails. Don't make these mistakes because even a single mistake can cost you hell. Even a single student reporting something about you can cost you and that's a major, major cost. So I would highly recommend, make sure you have your walls up, make sure you are going ahead, complying with all the norms that there are, make sure you're not jeopardizing your own visa status because this kind of a thing, I would be very disappointed to see that if it happens with even a single student that I know. And I know that, you know, all of those students are right now in shock that, you know, this thing is happening with them. But unfortunately, this is how it is going. Even the other organizations like the Chinese Student Union and the Chinese Embassy itself has emailed UB to kind of, you know, go ahead and cut these students some slack and if possible, reconsider their decision. Because again, these students are still in that 60 day period. However, no response has been received from the uh, from the university. So yeah, these students are anxious, their hearts are beating fast, and there's probably not a lot that we can do about it at the same point of time. I just feel bad for them, and I hope that the university listens to this message, they listens to the voices of these students, and, you know, I completely stand by the students in this, in this regard, at least. I know the students are not always doing their best, and sometimes they may not take, put in so much effort, they may have taken things lightly, but... I think these students still have time and they should be given that time. Diligence is due at this point of time and I think these students do deserve a second chance. Hopefully this video reaches a lot more students and you know at least creates awareness from something like this happening in the future. This is something that can happen with you, it can happen with your brother, your sister, really anyone who is studying overseas and you know we would hate to see that. So please go ahead and make sure this doesn't happen, make sure you share the video with people who actually genuinely need to know this, right? Parents, again, make sure that you're your, you know, children, your students that, that have gone overseas, right? Like, these people should know about this thing as well. Hope this video helps. I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Make sure to hit the subscribe button if you like this video. And goodbye and take care of your family.